All right, welcome back to the second part. Now we will just fix up our scene so we can have again some good starting point and we'll just introduce the textures and finalize this head skin material. So I kind of messed up all the things. So just plug this back in a scatter color and set opacity back to one. That's where we were, I guess and just go back to some environment map that is better for look development. Okay, so when we got the scan from 1024, it came with a bunch of maps. There's depth, which is very useful. This place, we won't be using that. Head color, diffuse, gloss, which is glossiness, spec, which is specular, reflection in our case, and normal map. So what we will do is we will get the depth one, reduce the filtering blur, we'll duplicate it, get the diffuse one, then we will get the glossiness one. Then we will get the specular one. And then we will get the normals. And normals will have to be open with override because it's normal map, it requires different gamma. Well, probably most of them do, but let's just for the purpose of this tutorial, keep it simple. So the diffuse goes first then specular, then glossiness, then normal, and then depth. So let's get corona normal. And keep in mind that the vast majority, like 90% of the normal maps you get will usually have flipped green channels. I mean, they will have correct green channels, but the 3ds max standard for some weird reason defaults to flipped green channels and the corona honors this 3ds max standard so just hit flip green plug this into normal map and plug this into bump map now let's take a closer look here for example yeah we can see the normal map structure and if i untick the flip green you can see how this light direction now goes from this weird kind of opposite direction. So always make sure to hit flip green so the orientation is correct. Uh, when it comes to intensity, it looks like the out of the box value works just fine. Diffuse color will just go to diffuse. Great. Now we already have some diffuse. We added a lot of post-processing. It makes really warm and contrasty. Uh, the, it makes the image very warm and contrasty. So just to make it slightly more realistic, just let's remove just a little bit of saturation. Okay, this is more reasonable. Now, there's specular map and you can see it's blue. And the reason it is blue is when I showed you uh, the different wavelength absorption, how it reflects the blue color, that should actually manifest also on the reflection, not just uh, subsurface. So uh, they took it in account when they were making the map the problem is they made it for unity and they made it a bit more stylized so it's it's slightly blue tinted but it's never this much tinted so what we can do is just get this and make this like really bright curve so this kind of curve is like inverse gamma which basically will both lighten up our image because for PBR workflow the 
colors should be the reflection color should be as high as possible and glossiness should kind of drive all the reflection properties and it will also wash out the blue color so that it's not so saturated so it's two in one win-win scenario and let's just plug it into reflection color let's set our opacity back to one obviously so this is without it this is with it you can see the slide amount with which uh, the reflection is now tinted so we have diffuse sorted out we have reflection color sorted out now let's sort of glossiness sort out glossiness i mean so let's grab this put in reflection glossiness slot and you see you can see it lit up a lot he looks like wet oily so what we can do is this was again built for unity and it won't work with corona out of the box so again what i will just do is enable color map and do the opposite make it darker and at the same time more contrasted by doing this kind of operation with a curve which will introduce which will both decrease the map brightness and introduce a little bit of contrast and just turn around our hdri to see the reflection properties but i'm quite satisfied with how the reflection and as well as glossiness work so let's keep it that way and the most important map and it's great that they included this map is a depth map because this is what actually defines the depth of subsurface volume so for example on the forehead there's not very much of depth because there's skull just a few few millimeters under the skin whereas ears uh, there's no there are no bones in the ears they are quite fairly translucent so ears are bright again you can see how the thicker the skin is and uh, less of the bones and like uh, untransparent materials there is under it the brighter it is on the this depth map so this depth map is awesome and how do we use it with corona so if i copy this color temporarily and i disable the opacity if I set absorption to monochromatic color, then you can see what the value does. It basically works as a multiplier of the distance. So the value is basically modifier. It multiplies uh, the distance and distance, as I said, is basically a density of the volume. So it modifies the density. So what we can do is simply plug this into absorption color and use this to modify density so you can see the ear is very translucent now whereas the forehead has a very very rough and very dense kind of volume so the thickness or the density of the subsurface is now variable uh, over our entire model but we have lost the ability to absorb different wavelengths because this map is monochromatic and this can be resolved quite easily just grab RGB multiply uh, this goes in the second slot and in the first slot goes this this already takes care of the brightness of the value so we we will put value all the way to 100 to 255 so the only uh, only thing that uh, is derived from this color is the actual saturation and the hue so now if i just quickly unplug the scatter color you can see we have this variable volume and uh, variable volume density and at the same time we are still able to absorb and different and, and reflect different wavelengths so in this case this may be 
too strict, like too dense. So RGB level now defines the value or the or the density. Or we can of course just use the distance parameter here. So let's do like 0.7 in this case. Okay, that looks fine. So we can reintroduce the scatter color back into our skin. We can reintroduce the, reintroduce the opacity. And we can just turn around our HDR map and take a look at how our skin looks. And I would say it turned out pretty nice. Maybe, just maybe, we have a bit too much of a normal mapping. So let's go here and decrease the bump to 0.7. And at the same time, this color could be slightly less saturated like this and again let's go through different HDR maps <clears throat> let's see how this one looks this is a little bit a little bit more dim I want something that has like sharp sunlight Yeah, this looks like quite sharp sun. And you can see it really behaves like human skin in all of the aspects. Maybe get some different map. Okay, this is this one is way too bright. But again, we can see the skin has turned quite nice. Just maybe it looks slightly more dry than it should. So this is easy fix. Bump up the glossiness slightly and bump up the Fresnel IOR again slightly. Yeah. Let's turn this around. Yeah, the glossiness may be overkill actually. Let's put it back and let's just do with our final change. Yep, and again, you can see behaves nicely like real human skin under all the directions of the light, all the lightning conditions. Let's let's maybe get something without without um, strong light source. Something that yeah, something like this. Yep. Again. Actually, let's quickly quickly increase exposure here. Okay. So this is soft lightning inside of some forest. And you can still see that the skin behaves perfectly. Only last tweak I would probably do, two tweaks, is I would use slightly more of a refraction to propagate the subsurface and less of a translucency. And I would decrease the distance just slightly and call this finished.
All right, yeah, so I think, I think this is it for the skin tutorial. So in the first part, we went over the theory, how all the parameters work and how you can utilize them. And in the second part, this part, we went over how we can then use and modify uh, the maps that have been supplied with the model to drive all those effects with. And as you can see, I think we've arrived at quite nice and realistic result. So I hope you found this tutorial useful and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.